So first and foremost, thanks for joining us. Um, <clears throat> we, we definitely appreciate your time. And uh, I guess it's a good time to do it here in the, the spring, in a little bit of the, the slower season. So what I'll do is I'll take you through kind of a, a really high-level product overview of HBX and the controls. Uh, we will also uh, get into some of the other stuff we're, we're currently working on and where we're moving. <clears throat> so um, once again, thanks. And a little bit about HBX, although most people probably do already know <clears throat> at this point, is we're a privately owned company in Calgary, and we <clears throat> we design, we build, and manufacture every piece that comes to you from our location here. So testing on the control started in 2002 and the first control was sold in late 2005. So the two owners, Curtis Bennett and Tom Herman, <clears throat> Tom was a big uh, Tecmar user back uh, before HBX and he has another company, Tamas Hydronics, and they, they build and sell hydronic panels and he was just kind of fed up at, at using the Tecmar. He had asked them many occasions if, if their controls can do certain things, and they just basically said, well, here's a list, choose one, and they didn't custom anything for, for his liking. So that's when he got in touch with Curtis and uh, started kind of working ever since. So, you know, they, they've spent over 10 years together uh, here, actually. So... So the, the biggest principle behind our controls is, is that it has modular expandability. So that allows you to take a small unit and make it into larger units. <clears throat> the main unit can house up to two stages. And if you wanted to expand the pumping or the boiler capabilities, you would just use an expansion module. And the CPU 1000 is the main unit here. And when you need to get into some larger applications, uh, we decided to have modules to add on to the main control and expand those capabilities of the, the CPU 1000 and the Eco 1000. Uh, also gets into, into some larger commercial jobs and even some industrial applications. So the way we would connect the modules uh, to the 1000 controls is simply by a 32-pin connector that connects easily to the side of the control or to another module. The two modules that I will talk about are the, the EXP100 and the EXP300 expansion modules. The EXP100 expands the capabilities of your boilers or your heat pumps uh, depending on your application. It has two extra dry contacts built onto it you can wire whatever voltage you want into it or out of the module. The EXP300 is a wet contact expander. So it has two wet contacts built onto it. And when I talk about the wet contacts, it means we have 120 volt coming out of it. So what you'll need to do is power up the EXP with 120 volt. And then you can wire your pumps directly into the EXP. Uh, so this allows you to easily wire up pumps without doing a bunch of interconnections and junction boxes. So the expansion modules can also be used for extra set points. So if you want to run a, a hot tub or a pool, for example, you would just add one of these modules onto the CPU 1000. One other expansion module is the, the Mod 100. And this allows us to control the modulating boiler, so you don't need a resistor to change from a 1 to 10 to a 4 to 20. So it's dip switch selectable on the back of the control. Uh, there's three different ways to modulate with the HBX controls. Uh, the first one is uh, series. It says modulate the first one all the way up to 100. Bring up the second one, and then bring up the third one and all three will be on uh, together. Um, the parallel just means that they're going to uh, come on together and rise together. Uh, but then we decided to build something that helps keeps the boilers condensing as well as not cycling that lag boiler. 
Uh, we call it progressive, and what it does is it brings the first boiler up to 80%. Then it will drop that boiler down to 40% as the second boiler rises to 40%. So essentially it's 80% uh, for two boilers as it was for the first boiler. And from there, we would move two boilers up to 80%, and then we drop them, them both down to 50% as we bring up the third boiler to 50%. And after that, we would move all three up together. So uh, this is a, a really good way to run the modulating boilers. So <clears throat> some of the features of the CP1000 is that it has uh, multiple application modes. So within this control, it's a staging control, a mixing control, domestic hot water, uh, dual system and dual mixing control. So we'll get into each of these uh, uh, a little bit further. So we, we talked about the modular expandability for this control. And there's no cross wiring, so everything is, wi is wired straight in. So power comes in line neutral ground, <clears throat> and then pubs can come out line neutral ground and all of your inputs are two wired so there's no cross wiring on those also. There's onboard pump sequencing. We have extra set points built on. The domestic hot water is built on with every control. And we have a, a graphic display so we can show graphs right on this control. There's also the brownout detection in there. As we found it in some rural areas, the power is not as good as it is in the city. So uh, it's in there to protect the circuitry. So when you first start the control, this is what you'll see. So at this point, you'll pick what control you'll need it to be. So you would choose uh, your staging, your mixing, domestic, dual system or dual mixing. The ABCD buttons will take you through the control for you to choose the settings and options. A is scroll up, B is down, C is the enter button, and D is a menu or the back So one thing when we designed this control is we took a lot of feedback from many different people and they said they wanted to see a lot of information on the screen. Back when this was built, Techor was the main control on the market and most of you might know that with their control you could only see one thing at a time. So what we did is we put a lot of information on the screen. <clears throat> because we have a graphic display we could show what we wanted to show on it. So on the main screen you'll see your temperatures with your targets whether the demands are on or off, all of the set points. You can see if it's in setback mode and you can see the time and the date. On the system function screen, you'll see what items are on or off along with the number of cycles it has gone through. So this can help you if you've just installed a system and the boiler is reading 2,000 cycles after a few days. So you might know you're short cycling that boiler somehow so it's just a, a quick check to make sure all is running fine within your setup. So the, our Zone 500 is, is it's either a standalone control, so it can work independent of our other controls, or you can connect it with the, the Eco 1000 or the CPU 1000, and you can have a lot more capabilities of the Zone control. So it can control up to four zones. Uh, it could be zone pumps or zone valves. So whatever power you put in the control, say 24, 24 comes out. If you put 120 in, 120 comes out. It can also be expandable up to 36 zones. Uh, <clears throat> that's just an arbitrary number we thought no one would exceed. It has a boiler TT contacts. So if any of the zones call, there's a TT enable, so you can use it for a boiler. Uh, you can uh, run a system pump if you are running valves. Has the zone post purge pump or valve control. So 24 VAC power comes out for the thermostats, and you can also have domestic hot water priority. 
but when you hook this up to the 1000 series controls, you don't need to crosswire anything from the zone control to those ones. It's dip switch selectable in the back, whether you want a high temperature demand or a low temperature demand zone. So this will fire the demand on the control when the zone either calls for heating or cooling. In warm weather shutdown, it will send a signal from the 1000 control to the zone control to shut off the zones. So if the thermostat is calling and the control is in warm weather shutdown, it won't turn the pump on, which gives you uh, better efficiency. If it's connected with our Eco 1000, uh, you can actually say you want a heating zone or a cooling zone. Uh, if it's in cold weather shutdown, the heating zones will be locked out. If it's in warm weather shutdown, the cooling zones will be locked out. We call that zone protection, so you're not sending uh, heating water to your cooling zones and vice versa. <clears throat> so here's a comparison chart that shows us the Tecmar product line along with the HBX equivalent product line. One thing to keep in mind is we are cost competitive with the Tecmar line and a lot of times our controls are below the cost of the Tecmar controls. Uh, we'll just use the first few lines for an example. Uh, the first one is a 262 two-stage boiler control. So that would just be simply one CPU 1000. A 263 could be, uh, is a boiler with a modulating. So we would use a one CPU 1000 and one mod 100. So as you can see, the CPU 1000 can replace a lot of the Tecmar product lines. <clears throat> as long as you have the, the, the correct modules, uh, you can definitely cut down on the, the number of controls. So our Eco 1000 is our geothermal control and what this allows you to do is it gives you either solar or geo capabilities. So it works on the same premise as a CPU 1000 control. As you can see it basically is a CPU 1000 and the only thing different between the two controls is internal software. So that way we just can keep the cost down. Uh, everything is the same as far as color-coded and key terminals. It has extra set points. There's no cross-wiring and you can use all of the expansion modules uh, except for the, the Mod 100 because you don't do any modulating with an Eco. It has a, a fault indicator, uh, an automatic heat cool changeover. So what that does is that we have a, a warm weather and a cold weather shutdown built on so you can adjust the setting so it doesn't matter if the thermostat is calling and cooling. If it's only 40 degrees out, you can lock those out. Uh, once again, it has uh, onboard graphene and the Eco 1000 comes with the brownout detection also. Uh, one thing to keep in mind with, the, with this control is that you can do a heating tank or a cooling tank or both a heating and cooling tank in one. So it, it doesn't matter if you're using a dual tank or a single tank situation. The user interface has the same screen and display as the CP1000 and it just shows you a different nomenclature. For example, we'd show tank temperature. Uh, if you're running a two tank system, this would read a hot tank and a cold tank. So it has your targets your outdoor temperature, your set points if you have them. It shows you heat demand, cool demand, <clears throat> excuse me, whether there's a, a fault in your system, and your set points, one, two, and three, uh, warm weather, cold weather shutdown. And also it has the system function screen on the right there, so it shows you what is on and what is off. So in geo application, we can do up to 14 stages of on-off or seven two-stage compressors. Uh, this can also be used for chillers. 
it doesn't necessarily have have to be using heat pumps. In this illustration, we're using a single tank and then out to a load, so the Eco 1000 controls everything from the tank to the left. And if you want to put a zone 500, you can control the zones if there were any out from the tank to the right. So basically, it's a single tank with a single heat pump and then out to a ground loop. And it can also control a backup heat source. So what that allows you to do is, is we can bring the backup on with a few different options. You can bring it on and lock out the heat pump based on tank or outdoor temperature. So there are some backup options you can choose in the control. Uh, with the Eco 1000, when you use the solar programming, it allows you to get into some larger solar applications. Uh, it's basically a differential control with a backup, as well as having a dump contact on it. It has auto-tuning differential built onto it, so it will make sure you have the optimum B BTU transfer, so it's going to change your delta T based on the running time of the pump. We have a, a different solar product I'll, I'll uh, discuss briefly that kind of replaces a lot of what we're doing with uh, the Eco 1000 and the, the solar application. So the CPU 500, it's, <clears throat> it's our commodity style control. Uh, works on the same concept as the CPU 1000 in regards to putting as much fun functionality into the control as we can. This control is not expandable, so it's a standalone unit, and the functions you can use the control for are a staging control, where you can do up to two stages, or a single mod stage. It also has domestic hot water capabilities built onto it. It has a boiler rotation, has the pump post purge, it has equal runtime built within the control. It's also a mixing control, so you can run a mod boiler with injection or a floating action, or we can run a modulating head valve. It's a set point control, so it has two fully independent set points built onto it. So essentially, we uh, we're, we can replace two Tecmar 150 controls in the CPU 500. You can use it as a differential set point, so it can be used in, uh, in solar applications. It also has dump contact, or you can run a delta T. We've just added recently the pump sequencer built onto it, so it's a standalone pump sequencer with exercise. So once again, we say this is a, a Tecmar 132 control. And finally, it can be used as an eco control. It'll run the heat pumps or chillers. It'll run your reversing valve. It can run a dual tank or a single tank system. Uh, as an eco control, it can do everything the eco 1000 can do, except it can only do it in two stages. It has a single tank or du dual tank capabilities, as well as warm weather and cold weather shutdown. <clears throat> so this is a user interface on the CPU 500, so you can see if it's in status or set mode. It shows you the temperature, and in this case it's showing the domestic hot water. It shows you on the bottom right the indication of the modulating percentage if you're running a modulating valve or a mod boiler. Warm weather and cold weather shutdown with domestic priorities and what relays are on. Uh, the big feature here is that it has a multicolored backlit display. So blue indicates a heat demand, yellow is in boiler protection, white means there's no demand on the system, red means either the boilers are running or the heat pumps are running, <clears throat> green can indicate the demand is on and the tank is satisfied. So you can use the display to see what color it is and have a, a quick view of what the control is doing. Uh, if you guys have ever talked uh, 
done a, a tech call with Fernando on a CPU 500, usually his first question is, what color is the display? So we can, we can get an idea of what the control is doing uh, currently. So here's another Techmark comparison chart we made up. Uh, this one's a bit easier to understand as far as the controls are concerned because there's only one CPU 1000, there's no expansion modules. Uh, the CPU 500 can replace many different Techmark controls and this helps out at a wholesaler as they don't have to stock many different controls and you can replace many with our HBX uh, CPU control. So it's good there's not as many SKUs at a wholesaler. Um, contractors can keep a few of these different controls in their vehicles and make sure that they can cover a wide range if they come up against any jobs where they need to replace a control. We've recently just separated uh, our quick sheet setup guide that we have. So in every CPU 500 we, we do have a sheet in there so it, 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 it covers all the applications that the CPU 500 can be used in. So we, we've separated that and put it into uh, basically two pages. So you'll have a, a piping diagram and then you'll have a wiring diagram and then on the back of that you'll see what screens you need to make adjustments to for it to run in that application. So this is something we've just recently separated. Uh, they are available online <clears throat> or if you guys want more information from myself you can let me know, shoot me off an email, give me a call and, and I can get you any information that you'll need. So Recently we did the, the ORC100, so it's, it's pretty new with HBX, it's, it's a single stage boiler control. Uh, we incorporated a, a single boiler control with a fully programmable reset function on the control. So we, we got asked this because there was a legislation in September 2012 that all, all boilers needed an outdoor reset control. So we, we kind of did this uh, for that specific reason. <clears throat> so here's some of the benefits of, of this control compared with the 256 control. Uh, we have boiler pump contact, you know, domestic hot water capabilities, domestic priority, it's a single screen programming, um, full graphic display with the backlit, and price-wise, compared to a Tecmar 256, uh, we're well below that control. So, so the Solar Block is our premium solar product. Uh, it's an all-in-one solar solution that has everything you need, uh, except for an expansion tank. It is a uh, 1578 pump built onto it which is a variable speed pump. So it's a very big pump that was designed for us for really high head situations as far as solar is concerned. So on this package it has the control built onto it. It has an air purge built onto it. It comes with a flow sensor. So with flow and delta T you have BTU. So it's also a BTU calculation built onto it also. So it's easy to set up and install. <clears throat> it does come with a 120 volt plug-in that goes directly into your outlet. Uh, there's no electrician that you need. It has a, a back plate that you mount to the wall. Then you would attach your solar block to that. Uh, so it's good in small footprints or limited spaces. So you can use a solar block in a few different applications. So you can use it in a dump feature application. So you can run from the panels to the tank or you can run over to some sort of dump source. You can use it uh, as a backup situation where it runs from the panels to the tank or we can pull hot water from the boiler and put it into the tank. So you don't need a two coil tank. We can run this all from a single coil tank. Um, 
<clears throat> it's also, uh, we've just added new drain back feature for the solar block. So with it, it's, a, it's priming pump control, uh, full speed setup, uh, dump feature, and it's got the special settings for the drain back systems. This is something that is a brand new release with us on the, on the software. So that, that will be, uh, <clears throat> we'll, we'll share more information with you on that right away. So it really is an excellent product if you're doing a small solar system setup. It can do up to about three or four solar panels or six encapsulated tubes. So we'll get into the snow melting system and <clears throat> the biggest difference between our setup and, and everybody else's snow melt is that we've developed an optical sensor. So what this allows you to, to do is see the snowfall. So it's not a typical continuity sensor where snow hits a sensor and it has to melt the snow and then it makes continuity between the brass fingers and then it sends the signal to the control, uh, we can actually see how much snowfall is falling and tune the system based on that rate. The optical sensor allows us to have multiple intensity settings so you can run an instantaneous snowfall setting where the control will wait to turn on until it sees a snowfall above the rate where you've set in the control. Uh, for example, if you have a picky customer that doesn't want to see any snow on the driveway, you can adjust the setting right down to 5 or 10 percent range. <clears throat> but if you have someone that doesn't mind to have an inch or two on the driveway, you can set it for 30 or 40 percent. Uh, there is a continuous snowfall setting, and when it's in this mode, uh, when it snows, even though it might not snow hard enough to get over that instantaneous setting you've made in the control, it might snow for a long time at a low snowfall rate. So in this setting, it'll bring the control out of idle mode and into melt mode. So that's based on your instantaneous snowfall setting <clears throat> and then also for a time of how long it's snowing for. It also has a force melt demand on it where it's just like turning the system on or off to melt the snow that is accumulated. So with this one, there's two parts here. Uh, there's a socket for the installation and the dud sensor on top and the snow sensor that comes with 100 feet of wire. So it comes with a really good three-year warranty with the sensor. It has a polycarbonate plastic that is the hardest plastic you can get. It is scratch resistant and that will not affect the optics of the sensor. So we have two controls that work with the optical sensor and the first we came out with is the Snow 1000. <clears throat> the Snow 1000 can do really big systems as it can run your boilers, it can run all of your mixing, it can run floating action and so on. Uh, the Snow 1000 has an idle mode, a melt mode, a forced, melt, forced melt demand. You can run adjustable delta T's. Uh, it can also run up to 10 on off boilers or 5 modulating boilers. It has multiple mixing, so valves, injection, warm weather and cold weather shutdown. So it has a lot of the features with this control. With the Snow 1000, it also has a second zone that you can set up. Uh, so you can have the, the snow zone with the optical sensor, and then you can have a slab zone with uh, external thermistor. On to the Snow 500. <clears throat> this control incorporates all of the same features from the Snow 1000, uh, except in a small package. So this won't do multiple boilers. It, is, it only has one boiler TT contact. Uh, once again, this, the, the 500 control has a multicolored backlit display. A light blue, it, there's no demand. Dark blue, it's in idle mode. Red, it's in melt mode. You can only do injection or valve control. 
and it's a single zone operation so it doesn't come with a slab sensor for the other zone once again we're using the same optical sensor we use with the snow 1000 uh, also has warm weather and cold weather shutdown and ever since we came out with the snow 500 this has taken over most of the sales we had on the the snow 1000 as it is a really inexpensive snow melting system in the market currently uh, much lower than the Tecmar snow melting system so in this graph it's just an example of your potential savings you can have with the HBX snow melt based on the intensity setting that you set in the control when you set the intensity percentage on the control the system will not turn on until the snowfall rate reaches that number with a conventional system as soon as there's moisture moisture on the sensor uh, the system will turn on so with our optical sensor you can you can also remote mount the sensor uh, on a roof in a flower bed uh, but with that you'll need to uh, install the uh, thermistor in the slab you are melting as we need to know the temperature of the slab for the system to function properly we actually get a lot of questions um, <clears throat> in down in uh, Colorado area of people wanting to uh, retrofit the optical sensor in a Tecmar socket <clears throat> Originally, I think the plans were for HBX to fit in there, but at the end of the day, it couldn't. Um, so the easiest way is just to remote mount your uh, optical sensor and then run over a uh, thermistor into the slab. The thermostats are our biggest selling product that, that we currently have. <clears throat> the we have two different ones I'll start with the THM 100 it's a single heat or single cool thermostat as well as a set point control so it's not only a thermostat it can also be a Tecmar 150 set point control so we have a lot of people using it for heating applications or cooling applications and they're also using it to replace aquastat so they have a digital aquastat the the one big difference in the thermostat is we're using a full PID logic thermostat so it's designed for radiant applications as many of the thermostats on the market only have the P and the I but it's the derivatives part that actually gets it into the radiant controls so with this we're watching the rate of movement on the slab on the way up and the rate of movement on the slab on the way down as far as the heat is concerned so it means we will minimize the overshoot or undershoot on the slab so you don't have uh, if you don't have the full PID logic then your thermostat is really going to overshoot and undershoot on a radiant application um, you know people install the radiant for comfort so it is more comfortable to have the less overshoot and undershoot and also in regards to uh, an efficient system we also include a, an external 10-foot sensor so you can do multiple temperature sensing uh, room average floor sensing plus room sensing as it has a, a large full graphic display um, a lot of people use it in the dual mode so they're keeping the floor warm as well as the room warm so you can have a floor sensor as well as keeping the room at a constant temperature uh, can use your radiant to keep your bathroom floor warm or your basement basement warm and keeping the room temperature where you want it to be <clears throat> I'll talk about the THM 200 and this is a three-stage it's a fully programmable PID thermostat it has a five and two-day programming so weekday and weekend it gives you the capabilities to set your differential between your heating and cooling as high as you want 
for instance, you can set your heating at 74 and set your cooling at 76. So it can run three stages. So that could be two heat, one cool, one heat, two cool, two heat, uh, single heat, single cool, or cool, cool with a fan. So we, we, we added a feature a little while ago in the THM 200 where you're able to have the programming feature or not because a lot of people wanted the two heat or single cool or one heat two cool but they wanted to have a manual switch over we now have the option to choose whether you want the programmable or non-programmable in that this also comes with a 10-foot thermistor and you can sense a room and floor temperature so it has all the same features as the THM 100 except it can do heating and cooling at the same time. Uh, with the <clears throat> THM 200 it's also a single stage boiler control with outdoor reset so pretty much your ORC 200 or ORC 100 uh, just doesn't have the thermostat software in the ORC where the, the THM 200 has the uh, single stage boiler control or the thermostat programming in it. So this is just a, a backplate view of the, the THM and, and the ease of installation. So you would just mount the backplate to the wall, you'd wire up to the main connector, and then you would just clip on the front face plate. So it's, it's really easy to install. And this is just a comparison chart, <clears throat> once again, uh, compared with the uh, Tecmar thermostat line. So it can the THM100 can replace the 507, 508, and the 509, or it can replace the 150 set point control. And then the THM200 uh, can replace the 510, 511, 512, and once again replace the 256 uh, single stage boiler control. Now we'll get into our software programs we've developed and the CIS software is a it's a full real-time logging system and a remote programming for the 1000 series controls. So this will connect with the, the CPU, the ECO, and the SNOW 1000 controls. It has a, a quick load feature that allows you to put all of your parameters in the control from one screen. Uh, we built the software for people to log into their controls and watch them to make sure all is functioning correctly within your system. Um, the 1000 series controls do have a built-in history, so you can retrieve history from your control uh, over the previous seven days if you've uh, encountered a, an issue. You can go back into that history to see uh, what has happened. Uh, we also have a, <clears throat> a CIS 300 which is uh, an Ethernet modem and that allows you to remotely log into the control from the internet on your computer wherever you are. So you can check your system as well as make any adjustments to the control from a ro remote location at your convenience if you do connect the modem to your 1000 control and also to your home network. HBX also built this designer software and we made it to help the contractors, uh, our reps, design our controls that are needed for specific jobs. So you would choose a control type say you wanted the staging control, it'll start to populate the controls that you need for the control in the control layout box at the bottom. It'll also give you a parts list where you can print this parts list off, take it into a wholesaler and they can get you the controls based on that list. The software also allows you to get wiring diagrams from it so when you're done designing your system and you you would just click on the lightning bolt that's at the top of the screen. It will go into our HBX server and it will find a wiring diagram for that system setup. 
if the server doesn't have that specific diagram. Uh, it allows you to send us an email and we can do that wiring diagram for you. So a couple of things we're, we're currently working on and uh, have coming up is the <clears throat> it's the the Wave 100. So it's our wireless outdoor sensor. Um, two different parts to this. There is a base unit and then also a the wireless sensor that will connect to the north facing wall. So the biggest benefit with this is it will work with any control not just an HBX control. So it can work on uh, 500, 5K, 10K, 20K thermistor curves. Um, <clears throat> so you can, you can connect this to uh, a, a, a Vito Den 100, 200 boiler. Uh, it could, we've connected it to uh, lots of different products and the, it, it, works, it works great. It gives you the exact temperature. Uh, so we, we've been able to kind of build that into our wireless platform. So there's no electrician needed to wire up. So once again, you're saving, you're saving time, you're saving some money. Uh, it's real simple to install and easy to pair. There's a battery life indicator on this product, so you'll know when to change the battery. Battery life is a minimum of two-year battery life. There's two AA's that will be included with the, uh, the Wave 100 package. There's also a signal strength indicator, one being weaker, six being the strongest, so you'll know where to place it on your north-facing wall. Uh, there's 2,000-foot open-air range, so it's... It, can really go through a lot. Uh, we've had it <clears throat> through concrete, through steel, wood, drywall, you name it, we've tested it. So uh, this will be released pretty quick. Uh, some of you guys uh, probably got some pre-orders in, which is perfect. And so that's cu currently what's coming out. Uh, some other stuff that we're, we're currently working on is a <clears throat> Continuing with our wireless, so having a wireless zoning with the main thermostat and having wireless sensors in each room so you're not having to put a thermostat in every room. So that's, that's some of the stuff we're working on. Uh, we're also going through a change of our um, a CPU 500 and then also the... Um, the Snow 500 control in the next several months that'll be out before uh, the heating season. So that's a refresh of, of what the control looks like and there's a couple of added features on on each one. Uh, so look for that. And then also, <clears throat> you know, kind of down the, the road, we want to add the wireless features to all of our controls. So, you know, we're, we're, we're definitely busy working on that. So. That's what we're doing, and that's pretty much uh, the high-level overview for our controls. Let's get everybody off mute here. Okay. Bye. So do you guys have any questions or anything that you need from me at this point um, to help you guys out? Uh, we can definitely get anything you need. Um, you know, just trying to get some feedback from you guys. Are you looking for for some more um, webinars? I think what we're going to do, we have one more product overview webinar in two weeks from now. And then I think we're going to start opening it up to you guys to see what, what suggestions you want us to maybe focus on. Uh, I think maybe a good one at this time could be a, a snow installation a shorter one, maybe half an hour webinars, trying to keep them as short as we can to, to, to get a little bit more people involved. Uh, but that's that's something that we want to take that feedback from you guys, and you can let us know, hey, I'd like to, okay. to learn more about I'm the back. Eco 1000 control <laughs> or CPU 500 control right. in the Eco mode or some of the thermostats or, or anything of that nature. Uh, we definitely want to take that feedback from you guys and 
uh, move forward with the webinars to help you out. Oh, okay. Yeah. No. Um, okay. Thank you for what I was doing. So, anybody, any questions? Anything you got? You want to add? No, we're all good. Yeah, it wasn't coming from them. I don't remember if I was doing that. Do you guys hear me still? Yeah. Um. No, no, this was something that I put to raise for him. Hang on, I just got to... Do you guys hear me? I think you guys are on mute. I've taken you guys off mute, so... No, no I'm off mute, I can't turn. <laughs> So let me know if you guys want this PowerPoint presentation or any other presentations. Uh, we can we can do some up for you guys specifically, or if you think this would be a good one for uh, for you guys to to maybe pass on to some of your customers or clientele. Let me know. I can pass this on to you guys.